Hello and welcome to the main course, Dish Up Some Food for Thought. In today's video, we are investigating the relationship between the Sun and the Earth and how it influences their movement. We specifically consider their rotation and tilt, why seasons occur on Earth and why the polar regions experience such long periods of day and night. In a previous video on the orbit of the Moon and the Earth, we saw that for two bodies in space, the position of the barycenter or center of mass around which they orbit is determined by the respective masses of the bodies. The Sun accounts for 99.86% of the mass of our solar system. Theoretically, the planets orbit around the Sun in elliptical paths, but since the Sun's mass is so much more than the rest of the objects in our solar system, the barycenter of each planet with the Sun is extremely close to the center of mass of the Sun. The deviations of the elliptical paths from perfect circles are therefore very small. For the Earth, the longest radius of its elliptical path is only 3.4% longer than the shortest radius. The planets in our solar system all orbit the Sun on a plane that deviates only very slightly from the horizontal plane. But there is something strange about this plane. Scientists have known for many years that the Sun's axis, as seen from Earth, is tilted by about 6 degrees. Put in another way, the horizontal plane on which the planets orbit around the Sun is tilted 6 degrees in relation to the Sun's axis. It sounds like a little, but since the Sun accounts for 99.86% of the mass of our solar system, this is an unexpectedly large angle. Scientists have not yet confirmed why this 6 degree tilt is present, but one theory states that there is another unknown planet about 10 times the mass of the Earth which orbits the Sun in a completely different plane and a long way off. The hypothesis is that this planet affects the orbital paths slightly and that those forces over all these years have led to a cumulative effect of a 6 degree tilt. However, this theory has not been empirically confirmed. Something interesting about the Sun's rotation around its own axis is that it does not happen uniformly throughout. The Sun consists of hot plasma, of which about 73% is hydrogen and 25% helium. The plasma experiences constant turbulence and it takes the plasma at the equator about 25.6 days to rotate around the axis, while the plasma at the poles takes about 33.5 days. The Earth, on the other hand, is tilted at 23.44 degrees. This tilt is responsible for seasons on Earth because, as the Earth orbits the Sun, it causes the angle of incidence of the sunbeams for a specific place on Earth to go through a repeating cycle. The angle of incidence is the angle at which the sunbeams hit the specific place on Earth. When they approach almost from the side, from the horizon, the amount of energy that reaches the Earth is considerably less compared to when it approaches the Earth from straight up above. Let's see what the Earth would look like from the Sun. At the end of December, the Sun's angle of incidence is small in the Southern Hemisphere, perpendicular to the Tropic of Capricorn, which means more energy is transferred to the Southern Hemisphere, causing summer there. As the Earth orbits the Sun, the Southern Hemisphere starts turning away from the Sun and autumn sets in. Around May, the Southern Hemisphere has turned away from the Sun so much that the angle of incidence is quite large, which brings about the onset of winter. Also notice how the South Pole will not see any sunlight for a few months, causing one long period of night on the South Pole. In contrast, the North Pole will now have daylight for about six months. Of course, the transition from night to day and day to night is gradual and slow. The Northern Hemisphere now feels the effects of more direct sunbeams during its summer months. When the sunlight falls perpendicular to the Tropic of Cancer, the cycle turns around and it starts getting colder in the Northern Hemisphere, and spring sets in in the Southern Hemisphere. This cycle repeats each year since the Earth takes one year to complete one orbit around the Sun. Something that you may not have thought about if you don't stay close to the equator yourself is that the equator never really experiences winter and it has two summers a year. One summer occurs when the direct sunlight moves from the north through the equator to the south and the other when it moves through the equator in the other direction. 
The periods between the summers are more like autumn and spring than winter, since the angle of incidence is never very large. Another interesting difference about different places on Earth is that people on the equator are used to the sun sometimes going by a bit north of perpendicular, sometimes perpendicular, and sometimes a bit south of perpendicular. But for people north of the Tropic of Cancer, the sun always goes by somewhat south of perpendicular, while people south of the Tropic of Capricorn always see the sun slightly north. There are various other factors to consider, especially over the long term, but I hope this visual representation helped to illustrate the relationship between the sun and the earth in an understandable way. Please subscribe and turn on notifications to stay informed of new content.